Holy shit. Der Typ ist schwer traumatisiert. Der wurde mit einem Geldpreis angelockt, in einen Käfig gesperrt, bis zur absoluten mentalen und körperlichen Erschöpfung, schwer traumatisiert und ihm wurde ein Drittel vom versprochenen Preis gegeben. Die haben ihn einfach für Geld gefoltert. Mr. Beast ist ein beschissener Kriegsverbrecher. Und du denkst dir so, du verachtenswertes Stück Scheiße, ne? Du, ich, dieses Video, das ist die richtige Entscheidung gewesen. Aber wenn du es geguckt hast, dann schau doch mal bei Meinungsmacher vorbei. Da gibt es jeden Tag neue Informationen aus den Nachrichten und aller Welt mit politischen Themen. Oder vielleicht beim zweitklassigen Reaktionskanal. Denn wir haben so viele Reaktionen, dass die halt nicht auf den Hauptkanal passen. Also guck da gerne vorbei. Und jetzt weiter mit dem Video. Cut! Okay, das zweite Video. Das zweite Video, das Mr. Beast angeht, ist jetzt wohl veröffentlicht worden. Und ich würde das gerne zusammen mit euch gucken. This video is not monetized and for educational purpose only. I'm hungry. All right, jokes for food. I wish a philanthropist YouTuber would just give me 10k and not film it. Hey, hey, the hell happened to you, Mr. Beast? That's what happened to me. What we do here is go back, 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 back. Oh my God. Oh my God. This is full content cop style. Oh my God. I missed this. Ich habe nicht gewusst, dass ich es gebrauche. Aber ich habe es gebraucht. Jake Weddle. Okay. Content Cop from Timu, back at it again. So just before. Ich kann leider wirklich keinen Untertitel machen. Untertitel nicht verfügbar, ne? Es ist verifiziert. Before I get into my interrogation with former Mr. Beast employee Jake Weddle, uh, a lot has happened since my last video. Uh, after posting like hundreds of messages from former Mr. Beast employees, um, and I had them all like send proof of former employment. You know, just people showing their support or telling their stories of, of you know, mm. fake videos or unsafe practices, uh, you know, toxic workplace, stuff like that. Uh, I'm not really going to get into those claims because, for one, like, most people want to stay anonymous, which I understand. I, and also, like, I think most of that stuff's just been covered with, with, you know, the news coming out about Beast Games and everything. Uh, and also, I have, like, more serious allegations that I want to start covering. Uh, also, I heard from a very credible source that Mr. Beast has been sitting on a response to part one uh, because he was worried if he posted it, I would instantly respond with part two, you know, like a, like this is Kids Bop, Kendrick Lamar versus Drake. Uh, also, I know Mr. Beast's secret CEO has been practically like harassing my people on, you know, hey, what's in part two? What, what does he know? Um, so, Oof. so I will just tell you, James, what will be in part three so you don't have, Oof. have to harass my people. It will be about serious allegations of, of sexual misconduct uh, in the company and your direct involvement in covering up those crimes. What? It will be about serious allegations of, of sexual misconduct uh, in the company and your direct involvement in covering up those crimes. Uh, and I'll make sure to give you full credit and, and plaster your face all over the screen when we talk about that. Uh, so yeah, I've got- Oh my God, what the f And dozens of messages from former Mr. Beast employees of, of uh, very serious allegations. So I just want to put a call to action in this, at the start of this video that, you know, if you have a story, you can DM me. Just uh, make sure you send uh, proof of employment first because I get a lot of DMs. Uh, and like, as much as I meme and joke around, like, I take anonymity very seriously. So without explicit permission, I don't go public with anything. And obviously, if it goes to court, I don't. I would hope they would censor your information from the court documents. I don't know. Uh, oh, and former contestants too. That's another thing I heard after posting my last video is uh, during the 100 boys versus girls video, uh, I have people corroborating the same story that the, the camera guy who gave the girls a drone was making some girls feel uncomfortable. You, know, you, you trap these girls in a circle and, and make them sleep on rough turf and, and get them high on paint fumes and, and then you try to f them. Okay, that, <laughs> <laughs> that seems really good. Mr. Beast production crew trapping 100 girls in a circle, depriving them of sleep, starving them, and trying to bang them. Uh... Dark now. No, it's not dark. You're misunderstanding me, bro. I'm, okay? I'm, I think I am. Yeah, you are. <laughs> because if the girl said no, then the answer obviously is no. No. But the thing right. is, is she's not gonna say yeah. no. She would never say no because of the implication. Anyway, so... That will be part three. So, you know, uh, Mr. Beast, do with that information what you will. I know uh, Chucky didn't want to respond to those allegations.
Okay, das sind drei Minuten von 50 und das ist schon ein, also das ist schon heikel. So anyway, my interview with Jake Weddle, um, I chose to interview him because I thought he was perfect because he was both on camera and behind the scenes in 2019 and 2020. And also, what people don't know is that he came back in 2021 to be the sole contestant of a Mr. Beast video, which never got uploaded because it went very badly. I Oof. He also knows about another um, portable document format who, who was working at Mr. Beast while, while actually on the registry. Uh, and, and I'll get more into that story at the end of the video. Uh, so I Bruder, Dr. Disrespect arbeitet für Mr. Beast. I got his DM, drove straight to New York overnight, did not sleep, just drank a bunch of caffeine. And, and I also only had one uh, microphone in the interview, which he's wearing. So it's mostly just him talking. Also, like, final thing, people said my last video started slow. This video also starts slow. It, it, it you know, it builds up over time. But I'll do the retention thing and say, uh, the ending will blow your mind. It's crazy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Jake Weddle, everybody. I'm Jake Weddle. Uh, most people who, uh, if, if you know me from Mr. Beast, I'm, I'm a deep cut. I'm in a few of the videos. Uh, okay, warte mal. Also ein Kandidat, er hat jetzt hier einen Kandidaten interviewed. Uh, sometimes maybe purposefully kept in the shadows a little bit. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm in the cutting room floor a lot of the time. Uh, but I've, I've been in some videos, I've worked on a lot of them. Uh, I was there from 2019 to 2020, 2021-ish when I came back and did some more. I, I was there when they were authentic and then I saw the transition to what I feel like is a company. He's like a TV show now. It went from it went from YouTuber guy with a camera to uh, Amazon. The culture around there was very unspoken, but there was a vibe. There was half the people who, if you made Jimmy happy, you were on the good half. And these people got random bonuses and uh, were usually moved up, had more screen time. Uh, and then there was people who, if you had a disagreement. Also, das ist wieder so jemand, der sowohl in den Shows aktiv war, als auch jemand, der dann halt da gearbeitet hat. Or butt heads with Jimmy, or just he didn't like it. You know, you were in the other half. And uh, I consistently was in the half that Jimmy did. Jimmy doesn't like me. That's fine. I don't like him either. It's okay. Uh, oh, it's just so good to say. I don't like Jimmy. I, I hate you so much. Uh, he didn't want anyone to get more popular or have more of a a way out necessarily. Like, oh, I'm doing my Twitch thing on the side. Don't do that because you could get famous and leave and talk about me negatively. Uh, and I could tell that the yes men were, you know, doing well. And uh, I was, you know, disgruntled uh, for quite some time. <laughs> so I'm also er und Mr. Beast haben sich eigentlich nicht so gut verstanden. Er war jetzt nicht einer von den Ja-Sagern und er sagt auch, dass nur die Ja-Sager halt Bonusse bekommen haben, besser behandelt wurden. Und das heißt, klingt halt nach einer Initiative, dem Mr. Beast nicht, Mr. Beast nicht zu widersprechen. I talk to reporters, right? Like publicly. And I've always had to choose my words very, very carefully because I don't want to say anything I don't stand behind, obviously. So I used to talk to people. I used to glaze Jimmy publicly for things I do genuinely think are true. Uh, but then it's like, well, how come we didn't talk about the working conditions? Well, I wanted a career. I didn't want to, you know, speak ill of YouTube's golden boy and then I'm blacklisted forever. I, I, I tell people I was talking to you and they go, don't, what are you doing? You're going to kill your career. It's like, I have to or I'll be sad. Uh, if this is the moment, we're going to talk about it. So uh, as far as that... Mm. Das hat man aber aus der Branche immer schon gehört. Das ist ein Entertainment-Problem. Die Tatsache, wenn du Probleme ansprichst, dass du nie wieder einen Job in der Branche bekommst. Ob das nun Musik ist, siehe Rammstein, ob das im Film ist. Also es ist ähm, ein universelles Problem. Uh, that's my covering up of why we didn't talk about XYZ sooner, but now Ja, in kleinen Ausmaßen, in kleinen Ausmaßen, vielleicht nicht in diesen Dimensionen, aber auch bei Ani, ja, das ist korrekt. Ja. Yeah. What, what would you say is the fakest video that you worked on while you were there? Fakest video that... Er trägt einfach seine Polizeiuniform. <laughs> I worked on while I was there. This is the extent of the, the fakeness that I was involved to. This is uh, admitting to my complicity. I was a writer there, and we were working on a video... Uh, I was a uh, scriptwriter, okay? Uh, crushing my friend's car with a rock or meteor or uh, something. It was, it was a rock or a meteor in the title. Okay, I can't remember, but... He wanted to do a prank where, unbeknownst to the person, he takes a rock, crushes their car, and they're supposed to think a rock came out of space. We're gonna take a meteor and we're gonna put it on Weddle's car. We're gonna take another meteor and put it on Marcus's car. Both of them have no idea that we're doing this. Weddle and Marcus are probably shocked. They had no idea. And so, well. so that was the one and only time I had to, huh, my car, what? And on the fly, I saw him, uh, cause Marcus was in that video. So Marcus is calling his mom. Marcus genuinely had no idea. He was, he was he genuinely had no idea, but. Uh, so Marcus is calling his mom, and his mom's freaking out. 
And I'm like, oh no, they're gonna call my mom next. So I had to text my mom, who had to beg to get the title very quickly. Now she, I am text my mom, I go, I go, mom, I'm about to call you about the meteor thing. You have no idea? Be surprised. <lacht> also so ein klassisches Leon Mascher Video, genau. So ein klassisches Aporet Mio Mascher Prank Video. <lacht> And then I hit send, and then they go, call your mom now. <laughs> and I call my mom and I tell her, and oh, she should have got the Oscar. Oh my God, on the fly, she goes, what? I'm on vacation. Mom, my car has been um, destroyed. Wait, what? <laughs> a meteor hit it. Jesus, I'm on vacation, do you understand? Uh, but uh, yeah, I did that video. And they're supposed to give me 10K to put a down payment on a uh, new car. And they wanted me to get like a big flashy new car. 10K was supposed to be a down payment. And uh, I can't afford a big flashy new car because I work at Mr. Beast. <lacht> so uh, I, I couldn't get anything, I couldn't afford the taxes on, I couldn't get anything, I couldn't afford the insurance on. Um, so I, I do my part of the video and I get a mom van that I could afford. And uh, Jimmy was like, why didn't you get a cooler car? I was like, I, what do you, I can't afford that, bro. Come on, what are you talking about? You know, if I was working on a. Irgendwas ist komisch an ihm. TV show in the 90s on a show that was a quarter as successful, I could retire today. Mm -hmm. But now I make dog shit pay, uh, making gajillionaires more money. And uh, I just walked into the writer's room. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I left, was because I just walked in there uh, and asked for not necessarily a gajillion dollars, but maybe a salary that was more proportional to the work I was doing, given how much revenue that work was doing. Uh, and then, you know, I, I talked about that, and I talked about the Writers Guild, and how this is what the Writers Guild Industry Standard is for the... Ja, kann die Aufregung sein. Also es ist wahrscheinlich die Aufregung, aber kann auch Belastung sein. Er hat ja eben gerade davon gesprochen, dass er das so lange nicht gesagt hat, und jetzt redet er darüber. Streaming Internet Content with Ads. I thought that was the closest thing to YouTube, and... I didn't even bring up residuals because, oh my God, if I got residuals for every video I worked on, boy, howdy, I could retire. But uh, uh, yeah, I, the, la the other thing I talked about was uh, there was another writer there, uh, older comic, uh, black guy, he had a kid, and uh, I got paid more than him, and I thought that was wild because he was older than me, had a child, uh, we're doing the exact same job, and uh, well, I'm some 20-year-old fucking white guy, why am I getting paid more than him? I brought that up. And... Uh, One of the things I, I didn't like about the way some of the B stuff shook out was. Fuck no. I feel, I feel really guilty about the way it just like shook out. Um, oh, I see it. Okay. Okay. Oh, fuck. Yeah, I was talking to this other writer. Like, it's, it's fucked up, you know, that that's how the pay is. And, I want you to get paid more, you know, because you deserve to get paid more. You know, I don't have a kid. Um, and he didn't want to rock the boat. He, did, he desperately didn't want to rock the boat. He was just, I, I like my job. I like, you know, because when you, when, you, when you grow up with, you know, nothing, not to say that he did, but I know I did, you know. You get a little something, you don't want to lose it. So he didn't want to rock the boat. But he said, hey, man, if that's how you feel, you know, like, if that's, like, I, I trust you. Um, he, he stood with me. He went to that writer's, he went to that meeting with me. Oh, no. Oh, f no. And I said, I said my piece, and he backed me up. And I said, I need X, Y, Z, or I'm out of here. And they said, bet. And they gave me a severance check the next day. And they gave him a severance check the next day. And if I knew... <sighs> Holy sh**, der Typ ist schwer traumatisiert. Holy f***, Alter. Das ist ja wie ein, das ist, das kommt sogar unkontrolliert aus ihm raus. If I knew he was gonna lose his job too, I wouldn't have done it. Ja, der hat also folgendes, der hat einen Arbeitskollegen, den er sehr mag, schwarz, hat ein Kind. Und er hat gemerkt, dass er selber mehr verdient, Single, äh, Jung, als der Typ, der deutlich älter ist, äh, älter ist und ein alleinerziehender Vater. Und das hat ihn gestört, deswegen ist er zum, äh, zum, zur Geschäftsführung in, gegangen und hat gesagt, ey, das geht nicht. Und er wollte nicht, dass der Typ, den er so sehr mag, der, den er damit eigentlich auch irgendwie supportet hat, da jetzt darunter leidet, leidet, weil der auch den Job sehr mochte. Und äh, er ist trotzdem mit ihm zusammen dahin gegangen. Das heißt, die sind zusammen dahin gegangen und haben das gesagt und ähm, die wurden dann beide entlassen. Holy sh**, die Reaktion ist insane. 
Me? I was over the moon. I was like, you're gonna give me a, a, a check and I get to leave? <laughs> ich weiß nicht, ob ihr das, also das ist so, das ist so der klassische humor -Koper. So, das ist das Coping-Mechanismus, der verarbeitet das mit, mit Witzen. Der kann das nur mit Witzen. Der macht Witze und darum wirkt er auch so aufgedreht. Also, war, also wahrscheinlich die Nervosität natürlich nochmal on top, aber das ist hier Witz plus Trauma. Und dann Witze nutzen, um das Trauma zu überspielen. Ja, yeah, I don't get the deal with the, with the yeah. how many Orbeez can I fit up my asshole every day, you know? And I get to go, go home and you get, you're gonna pay me to leave. I was over the moon. Holy shit, Alter. And he was devastated. He did not want I said, he was, he just wanted to be in the room, you know? Oh, no. And I really regret, I really regret that. But, you know, me and him are really still tight. We're still good friends. Is he doing good? Yeah, he's doing good. He's, he's, he's a good guy. I love that guy. He's doing good. Fair enough. Oh, God. Oh. Yeah. So maybe he was feeling better? Honestly, best thing I could have done for him. <laughs> Now that he's uh, very, very far removed from all this crazy shit. I guess. Do you think Jimmy really enjoys doing good and helping people? I think Jimmy wants to be the best YouTuber. I think he is laser focused on one goal. Um, and I think whatever he has to do to achieve that goal, he'll do. Mm. And I think it was the smartest decision for him that he calculated because he's very good with numbers. If I donate to charity, people can't say I'm shitty. If I donate to, if I give this homeless guy 10K, what do you mean I'm a bad guy? But I've always thought, if you're going to do something nice for somebody and you stick a camera in their face while you do it, it you didn't do a nice thing for somebody. You, you gained something. You ja, klassisch, das ist dieses klassische, ich gehe jetzt auf der Straße zu einem Obdachlosen und gebe dem Geld, damit ich das auf einem Video aufzeichnen kann und den Leuten zeigen kann, was ich für ein guter Mensch bin. Das ist... Bruder, davon gibt es so viele Leute. Da, das, das ist nicht Mr. Beast Exclusive. Das ist einfach, das, es gibt Tausende von diesen Leuten. There is a homeless guy on the street and you saw an opportunity. Wir hatten mal diese Bartmann-Thematik. Ja, ihr erinnert euch. Ey, die Hardliner erinnern sich, die Stay Hardliner. Die erinnern sich, diese Bartmann-Thematik, wo der einen äh, psychisch kranken Mann von der Straße aufgelehnt hat, das in YouTube-Content verpackt hat und der dann weggelaufen ist und ihm dann ganz am Ende, ihm ganz am Ende gesagt hat, was er eigentlich für ein, für ein schrecklicher Mensch ist. So, also wirklich, das war wirklich bitter. For yourself and your image and you... Ja, und dann gibt es diese kompletten psychogestörten Wetter, die dann sagen, ja, aber er hilft ja den Leuten. Hä? Wie kannst du das schlecht finden? Der hilft den Leuten, hilft den Leuten doch. Weil man moralisch einfach wirklich am Bodensatz der, 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 der Teekanne kratzt. Einfach weil es moralisch, ja, es ist ja im Video zu sehen, dass der Leuten hilft. Oh, come on, bro. Eieieiei. Gave one guy $10,000 who needed it to eat and now the revenue you generated from that video is way more than what you gave. Mm. I think when he's generous on camera, it's the least authentic thing in the world. Mm. There, there, there's an element of, you know, oh, hey, you're crying. That's so good for camera. You know, I'm so glad he's, if you're crying because you're so thankful that you got X, Y, Z, and then you go, oh, that's so, I'm so glad he needed it that bad so I could oh. come in and, oh, can, you, can you cry more? Oh, das ist so hart, Alter. Er beschreibt das sehr gut. Er sagt, das, wird, das schafft so Situationen, wo sich dann halt Editoren und Kameramänner und Frauen darüber freuen, dass die Betroffenen von solchen Leiden, die sich dann über irgendwie eine gemeinnützige oder eine gute, über ein gutes Zeichen freuen, dass die dann weinen und dann fängt man an, in solche soziopathischen Gedanken reinzukommen, so von wegen, oh Gott sei Dank weint er, weil dann kann man das auf der Kamera richtig sehen. Oh, oh kriegt Gänsehaut. I was so good for the camera if you could, oh, I just did. It made me uncomfortable that I was working there and I didn't like it and I vocalized it sometimes. And I think that's why I wasn't on camera as much as they said I was going to be. Uh, I was told at one point that I was going to be like fourth banana, you know, it was going to be Jimmy, Chris, Chandler, me, you know, and then that never happened. I remember talking about that, like, hey, I thought my contract said X, Y, Z. Uh, and then I got the severance checks. So, you know, whatever, all that regard. <laughs> So after your severance checks, how was your relationship with the company? I know you appeared in videos. Also nach der Kündigung, Kündigung wie war es denn danach? After that, right? Right. So so in videos where I was uh, appearing in later, that that's why you keep nice publicly. If you if you're nice in public, 
hey, Jake was nice in public. Let's have him back for something. You know, yeah, sure. So I was, I was hoping they call back, you know? And uh, I, I appeared in some videos after I left. I think one of them was a, a, a three days in a maximum security prison. Uh, if I did do many challenges in that, I got paid. I was, you know, clocked in with a, with a rate and I would get paid and compensated for those. Uh, but there was one video I was in, I got, I got paid a lot for, but it didn't, uh, it, it didn't come out. Uh, it, it didn't, it didn't come out because it didn't go well. There was, there was a video, um, that came out probably like a year ago, something like that. It was, it was the, uh, it got a lot of hot water when it came out. YouTube star Meta Beast paid 340.000 to spend 21 days in windowless room according to this new video. Okay. It was the, uh, the like surviving like uh, $10,000 every day you survive in solitary or surviving solitary. 10,000 Dollar für jeden Tag, den du im Gefängnis überlebst. Solitary for whatever. It was, just, it was one of those solitary confinement videos that got a lot of media attention because everybody saw the premise and thought, what? You shouldn't do that. And if people don't know, that was the second attempt. Uh, the, the first attempt was on me. Oh no. And it, it didn't go well. Oh f no, Alter. Oh f no, what the f Was zur Hölle muss in einem Mr. Beast Video passieren, dass die Cutter und Leute, die das im Nachhinein schneiden, es nicht mehr retten können. Wenn wir so viele weirden Situationen in Mr. Beast Videos schon gesehen haben, die zumindest fragwürdig sind. I was already, I was already planning on uh, moving to New York and I had worked at a couple of YouTube companies after Beast. And I had a little bit of change in my pocket, you know, the most change I had in my pocket ever, you know, small potatoes, you know, compared to Beast bullshit. But, you know, I thought I had enough to, to move to New York or whatever. And uh, I, I get a call uh, from somebody over there and they go, hey, they want you for a video. I was like, oh, amazing, great, cool, thank God. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, well, they, what's the video? And they tell me the print, the pitch. And they, they, they try to make the pitch sound like it's going to be like a walk in the park. Uh, the pitch is a uh, hundred days in solitary confinement. Uh, but don't worry, like you only have to last like 30. We have like a video. They're pitching it like a, oh, it's, at first it's going to be like a luxury vacation. You're going to have like a hot tub and an ice cream machine. And like part of the video is going to be you deciding like what, what, what items am I going to get rid of, you know, today? And it's like the choice. They were like, uh, it's only going to be bad for the last like five days tops when you have like nothing left. You're the first, it's going to be like a breeze for most of it. And, uh, by the 30 Tage in Isolationshaft? Oh. At the end of it, after 30 days, you're going to get 300,000. Eigentlich 100 Tage, aber 30. Dollars, because it's $10,000 a day. And I don't know, man. I grew up poor in North Carolina. I said, blah, 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 excuse me, you, I'll yell dance for you if you put that kind of money in my face, sure. They were like, you're going to be locked in this room and we got to make sure you're on all the time. We're going to have cameras on you all the time and you're perfect for this because you never shut the f*** up. Uh, you know, on, on paper, I was like, okay, I can do this. And, and I was, they always, they always cut me out of the videos. They always, and I was, you know, editors have told me, that uh, it's because you have too much of a personality. And so with this video, I thought, this is perfect. It's a video they can't cut me out of. I'm the guy. And so I thought, well, if I have to do this, if I have to do solitary confinement in order to do the things I want to do, then I will do that. that I held my tongue and I swallowed my pride and I tried to do one, one, one last ride. Das sind einfach, also das ist schon grenzwertig. Aber ich habe das Gefühl, dass es mehr als grenzwertig wird, weil sie das Video ja nie veröffentlicht haben. Uh, and uh, I get there. And at first it's fine. And uh, I mean, they, they just freshly painted the set. You could smell it, you know, which that's probably not good. You know, the smell of fresh paint in your surroundings for the next XYZ time. True. Uh, it looked good on the visual. It, it looks good on camera. You know, it's movie magic bullshit. It was a terrible facility. I mean, he was in one of the studios. The, they had to like get like a separate like tank for, you know, septic stuff. Uh, yeah, there was a hot tub in it. Yeah, there was an ice cream machine. Like things look, were cool and funny on paper. But when you think about stuff, 
A hot tub that's not connected to a filtration system. Give it three days, it's gonna stink. You know, if there's not a, like a hot water mechanism, so the, the hot tub was a lukewarm tub at best, which was a silly complaint, but the shower was always cold, and you would taken like a quick shower, and, and I had cameras 24-7 on me, and the ice cream machine, let's talk about that for a second, the ice cream machine has two modes, on, and off, reeking of smelly, dairy, mildew, like, so I got to choose which sense was assaulted at a time. I, I couldn't have all of them good. Uh, so the, the little things started to build up, you know, there was like a, a, the bug thing wasn't like terrible, but it was a factor. And like at first it was fine, you know, and you're, Insekten auch, ja. mm. you're, you're playing it up like, cause you know, it's a video and it got to a point where like, they weren't, they weren't turning the lights off. You know, I asked them, I said, can we like have like nighttime hours, you know? And I, I said no, because it would f*** up the time-lapse shots. The time-lapse of what? Me sleeping? Or me not sleeping? Yeah, I saw in other videos they did a... a like, oh, you're gonna get XYZ hours of sunlight. Oh, great! Why well, don't know how they figured that one out? I didn't have it! <laughs> Digga, die haben ihn einfach in einer... Die haben ihn einfach gefoltert, Alter. Die haben ihn einfach für Geld gefoltert. Er beschreibt gerade, dass sie den das Licht die ganze Zeit angelassen haben und ich bin mir ziemlich sicher, dass das über einen längeren Zeitraum ganz klar Folter ist. Kein Zeitgefühl, kein Sonnenlicht, keine Dunkelheit, die ganze Zeit Licht, 24 Stunden lang gefilmt. What the f***, bro? The, the, the lights are on me all the time. I wasn't sleeping. I, I could not sleep. And I, oh, my God, Alter. I have insomnia problems now, um, it, but I, I, they might have started there. I had good people looking out for me. I had a lot of good people looking out for me saying, this, this, we got to stop. Holy shit, Alter. Holy shit. So I, I, um, I just wanted to turn the lights off. And I'm, I'm vocalizing to people. I wish the lights would turn off. And I go up to my friend, my, 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 my good friend. And I go, I go, I go, they're not turning the lights off. He goes, what? That's a war crime. We're not allowed to do that to terror. The United Nations considers sleep deprivation to be a form of torture and a war crime under the Geneva Convention and the UN Torture Convention. Es ist halt, also das ist halt, Mr. Beast ist ein beschissener Kriegsverbrecher. Digga, Guantanamo Beast? Digga, was? Terrorists. Oh, oh, good. 24 hours breaking the Geneva Convention, I guess, is what we're doing. Um, so, you know, they, they're, they're giving me, you know, melatonin. You know, it's not helping. Methadon? Haben Sie gerade Methadon gesagt? Sie geben mir Methadon? Methadon? Nee, das kann, was, kann auch was anderes sein. Melatonin. Ah, okay, sie geben ihm Melatonin wegen der Lichtsache. Ah, und, uh, ja, ja, ja. You know, and then, and then Jimmy would come in, like, every other day for, like, an hour, you know, to check in on me, because he's doing other stuff. You know, I'm just the, the guy in the cage over here. He'll come back to me in a minute. Uh, and so he'd come by, he'd get the shots, he'd leave. Uh, sometimes he'd have a note for the director over the phone that would really piss me off. This is the note I got from the director, from Jimmy, uh, when I'm receiving some cash. Uh, he said, uh, Jimmy said, uh, can you say to the camera how thankful you are that, that now you can pay back your student loans? Digga, der wird on camera gefoltert und soll dann in die Kamera sagen, wie dankbar er dafür ist, dass er endlich seine Student Loans, Student Loans, seinen Student Studentkredit zurückzahlen kann. Bruder. <lacht> Bruder. What the f ist Mr. Beast doing? Was macht dieser Kerl da? Digga, der führt so ein kleines, eigenes, autokratisches Reich in Amerika selbst. US-Truppen dürfen auf amerikanischen Boden Leute nicht foltern, aber für Mr. Beast da gelten andere Regeln. What the f***, bro? You know how hard it was to do a take of that? They pretend to make it genuine. 
I don't want to have student loans. I don't want to be in a cage. But Jimmy's the guy with the money. And if you, if you do what he says, he'll do what you want. You know, you'll, oh, you want your student loans paid off? You'll be in this cage. And you have, you have power over people. When one person doesn't have resources and the other one does, and they, they hold it over your head, you go, of course, of course, yeah, I agree to it. Wir kriegen hier gerade übrigens, also, also das ist für mich natürlich auch nochmal besonders und glaube ich für uns alle hier gerade, die wir das sehen, wenn wir uns in dieselbe politische Richtung bewegen, muss man mal sagen. Wir kriegen hier gerade einen, einen Lehrgang darüber, welche Auswüchse Kapitalismus anwenden kann, äh, also welche Auswüchse das, das einnehmen kann und wie groß das werden kann und was das für, mit Leuten macht. Was Geld im Zusammenhang mit der Situation, mit Abhängigkeiten zu Sachen macht. Und ich meine nicht, die klassische Abhängigkeit, dass du natürlich zur Arbeit gehen musst. Aber das hier ist straight up, lass dich foltern für Geld. Weil du brauchst das Geld. Du bist doch arm aufgewachsen. Ja? Ich glaube, es gibt Filme, die das ähnlich hart darstellen. Die so eine dystopische Ultrakapital-Zukunft zeigen. Und so viel Zukunft ist das gar nicht. Scheint eine Menge Gegenwart zu sein. Alter Schwede. Also ich meine, Game Shows, genau, Game Shows kennt man ja. Aber das hier, puh, das ist ganz schön weit. Squid Game IRL. I needed it, of course. Just something about like having the cameras up all the time. Like I was, I was, I was not having a good time, but we were filming a video, so I was trying my best to be funny. You know, I'm, I got, I'm a dark comic. Yeah, I got, I got bits about. I had a very traumatic life. Uh, I have my, 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 my dad is in jail for sexual assault of a minor, you know? So this kind of stuff is very... Oh, oh, oh f*** me, bro. Very near and dear to my heart. You know, I don't f*** around with this shit. Yeah, I, I have jokes about that in my act. You know, I, I joke about it because, you know, that's what you do in a traumatic experience. You know, I, I abusive relationships. I get out of it. The first thing I do is I, I do a tight fine about it. You know, so I'm in this situation where I, my, my mental health is not good. My physical health is getting worse, but we're filming. So I'm doing bits, <laughs> I'm talking to the camera <laughs> and I'm being, you know, like, hey, it's been a couple days, I'm not doing so hot, you know, which if I'm filming a video, that's what I should be doing for the camera, but it, it was, it was too real. <laughs> if they're faking videos, why couldn't we fake this one? You know, if, if, oh. if, if we're allowed to let these cast members have some time off of, of, of this difficult challenge, how come we couldn't turn the lights off? Oh, wow, das ist krass. Er fragt, wenn wir Sachen für Videos faken, für die Leute, die es jetzt vielleicht, weil er so schnell spricht, wenn wir Sachen für Videos faken, warum faken wir dann nicht die Tatsache, dass ich hier halt die ganze Zeit im Licht sitze und man kann das irgendwie anders machen? Warum muss ich wirklich, also das sind jetzt meine Worte, warum muss der wirklich gefoltert werden? Das ist eine interessante Frage. How come we couldn't maybe not have some time lapse for 10 seconds? Did you uh, try to get out? Yes! I was starting to calculate, um, oh, I don't know if I could do 30. Uh, uh, how much uh, can I, well, how, how can I manage to get out of here sooner uh, and still have a video and still uh, have some cash and um, get the plug, man. I, I just, I just, I did. Since we were doing time-lapse shots and since they insisted on time-lapse shots, I said, all right, we're gonna do time-lapse shots, bet. I put my, I put my YouTube on, on with the whiteboard they gave me and I was like all right yeah scrub, go ahead and scrub that footage you know you got that whiteboard oh, oh no either that goes in or this footage is unusable and then you know James Warren came in and erased it you know fucking, you know, don't, don't put that don't, don't. hey we can torture him don't you dare let him get a plug in there you know uh so uh, it, like we were playing up the joke you know it's like oh, I'm the boy in the cage you know whatever like I'll play into a joke whatever it's fine it's just something weird about when Jimmy jokes I have jokes about my dad because I love jokes about my dad. I'll joke about my dad all the time. I guess piece of shit. I hate my dad. Uh, I have friends that make fun of my dad. That's fine because I know their intent. I know where they're coming from. When Jimmy joked with my dad, and I sometimes seem weird. I don't like it. <laughs> we were doing that one of those hide and seek videos again. You know, at the time they were a lot realer. Uh, so I got caught, and when you get caught, you know, you go to the you go to you go to the place where you get caught. And uh, I, I don't know if there's footage of this. I don't know if, you know, I, don't, I definitely didn't make the final cut. Uh, but he, he says to me, uh, all right, you're going to jail. You know, like your dad. 
And like, it's a joke. But when my, my friends do it, it's fine. And, and Jimmy just wasn't my friend. He was my boss. And that wasn't cool. And so now, I'm locked in a cage at his whim. And I have to do things to get the cash I need to live. Holy shit, Alter. And I got these cameras on me all the time. And I was unwell. I had editors coming up to me saying, you good, bud? And I was like, yeah, boy. you're clearly unwell. Uh, and he goes, uh, well, because the footage you're sending in is haunting. Because I'm trying to be funny, but I am mentally decaying, so I'm doing bits. Someone said there is a horror cut uh, of a video in this. And I'm sitting like, who's watching this? Like, who, who wants to see this? What is fun about this, the video? And so I, the thing that made me want to, I got to get out. I can't do another day in here. Um, Jimmy comes in and uh, I'm asleep. I don't know what time it is. I was like two or three or whatever. He's like, why is he sleeping? I don't know, because I can't sleep. And he comes in and he wakes me up. Uh, and he goes, ask me why I have two briefcases. And I'm like, why do you have, why do you have two briefcases? And he goes, oh, because this, this one's for today, you know, and this one's for the challenge. And I go, that's the challenge today. He goes, you're going to, you're going to run a marathon. You're going to do the two, 22.6 K, whatever it is. And you're going to do it on that treadmill over there. The first challenge I did was a Rubik's Cube. And I'm, I'm, I'm dyslexic. I'm dumb. I don't, I don't have to do a Rubik's Cube. Uh, so your first challenge, Rubik's Cube. I was like, oh, I don't want to do it. I was like, on camera. I don't, I don't want to do it. He goes, just do it for the thing. Like, kid, you know? Yeah. Like, th th there was an element of, oh, Jake will do what we want because he's in-house. You know, that, that's one of the reasons why they got me. Uh, Jake's, uh, uh, he's, he's an inside guy, so he'll, he'll do whatever. Uh, we, we, we can push him a little extra hard because we know he's good. We know he's I couldn't say no to the to treadmill thing. Yeah. So I, 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 people who run marathons train forever and it's still hard. Er hat das Geld bekommen, setzt mich sofort unter einen Stadionfluter. Würdest du dich für Geld foltern lassen? Also foltern, also legit foltern. Ich weiß jetzt nicht, wie die Implications davon aussehen. Ich glaube, es ist auch nicht, also ich maße mir einfach an, es ist an dem Punkt dieses Videos einfach nicht so schlau, solche Sachen zu sagen, weil der Plot zum jetzigen Zeitpunkt eine ganz klare Folterabsicht hinsichert. Und das unter der Prämisse, du wirst dafür bezahlt. Sorry, nein, aber für mich wäre es ein Life-Change. Du hast überhaupt, du anscheinend, okay, der Typ hier hat pro Tag 10.000 Dollar dafür, dass er sich tagelang foltern lässt. Das ist die Prämisse. Dafür arbeite ich sehr. Ich habe, du, du hast mir anscheinend nicht zugehört. Der, also ich, ich, seid ihr, also ich drücke mich vielleicht nicht ganz klar aus. Der beschreibt hier exzessive Umstände, die zur Folter, das ist eine Folterung. Der wird gefoltert. Der ist in einem Umfeld, das ihn Schlafentzug gibt und er gefoltert wird. Er wird gefoltert. Ich weiß nicht, ob dein Englisch so gut ist oder schlecht. Der Anreiz dafür ist Geld. Und die Frage ist ganz einfach. Willst du dich für Geld foltern lassen? Und jetzt red dich da nicht raus, sondern sag ja oder nein. Und wenn du nein sagst, wie jeder grundvernünftige Mensch. Wir gucken erstmal weiter und schauen einfach, wie gut deine Aussagen altern, okay? Und dann werde ich wahrscheinlich noch dich mehrmals so nennen, weil das zeichnet sich hier als absolut traumatische Post, also wirklich traumatische Sache an. Wirklich. Und sich hier hinzusetzen und dann zu sagen, ja, ha, 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 ich würde mich ja, ha, ha, weil der hat das ja freiwillig gemacht. Bruder, shut the f*** up. Wenn dein Englisch auf Viertklässlerniveau ist und den Rahmen hier nicht versteht, dann solltest du das machen, was Leute machen, wenn sie Inhalte nicht verstehen. Nicht damit partizipieren, sondern die Fritze halten. Again, writer. Do I look like I run? I don't run, you know? Let alone a marathon, let alone that train for it. So, I was in a sunlightless, you know. Did you try to say no? Like, did you have a choice or? Based on the Rubik's Cube thing and based on all the other stuff, like, they gotta, there was so much pressure to just do it, just do the thing, you know? Es gibt nur eine Meinung, okay. Bruder. 
du schaffst es nicht, dein dummes Maul zu halten, oder? Du hast gerade folgenden, folgenden Dialog hat hier gerade stattgefunden. Ich habe dich eine konkrete Frage gestellt. Du hast dich mehrmals rausgewunden, ja? Und dann hast du gesagt, um dich nochmal rauszuwinden, weil ich das immer wieder klargestellt habe, dass du es nicht richtig verstanden hast. Und als ich dir gesagt habe, dass du deine dumme Fitze halten sollst, weil du Sachen anscheinend da auf deinem Eigenständnis nicht verstehst, sagst du, deine Meinungsfreiheit ist gefährdet. Bist du eigentlich, wie dumm kannst du sein, Alter? Du hast das gerade eingestanden, dass du es nicht verstanden hast. Und anstatt zu sagen, ey, habe ich nicht gecheckt, raff ich halt nicht, bin zu dumm, Viertklässler, kein Englisch gehabt, hältst du einfach nicht die Fitze und tust als ob dich als Opfer stilisieren, weil du halt jetzt mal ein bisschen auf die Fitze bekommst. Aber anscheinend reicht das noch nicht und du machst noch weiter, anstatt einfach die Fitze zu halten. Sei einfach ruhig. Wir haben alle gecheckt, dass du tief in die Fitze gegriffen hast, ich denke sogar, du selbst hast das gecheckt und jetzt ist einfach Ruhe. Ne? Hast jetzt hier ein paar Schellen bekommen, ha, ha, hi, hi, hast dich ein bisschen rausgewunden, weil Meinungsfreiheit und jetzt kannst du zurück in deine Telegram-Gruppe gehen und sagen, ja, dieser beschissene linke Stay, der hat mich ja gedemütigt. Ich muss jetzt mal meine politische Ideologie überdenken. Digga, halt einfach dein Maul. Wo waren wir stehen geblieben? Well, that's the whole video. I guess the budget's, you know, so much money up in flames because Jake said he wouldn't want to do the thing. And so I wanted to be a good sport and I wanted to get the boost and I wanted the cash. And so I started running at 12. Um, I, yeah, I was able to take some breaks and I, I asked him, how long do I have? He goes, until I get back. <laughs> and I'm, I'm running until 3 a.m. I got off the treadmill. Ah, oh, the blisters I had on my feet were like, you wouldn't believe, it's all over, just these big red, I couldn't, I couldn't walk, my, my, my muscles were like, just the, the lactic acid, I, I, I got off the treadmill and then the people that came in to like ice my feet, you know, make sure I was good. Then that's when I was like, I'm done, I can't, I'm done, I'm done, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. I mean, that's when I'm, Yeah, uh, they get psych in and talk to the psych about how I'm uh, not well. And uh, like I said, there was a lot of good people over there that was saying, you got to pull him out. Yeah, I had friends uh, that did some freelance work and uh, they, they, would, they would tell me, they'd be like, uh, yeah, everyone knows you over there. Everybody loves you. They go, uh, oh, Jake, well, I love that guy. Shame what happened to him. <laughs> like I'm a ghost. And I asked him, I said, I said, how much longer are you guys going to keep me in here? And the guy goes, realistically, like, at least seven more days? I, no. No. And they didn't let me leave right away either. They wanted to make sure, you know, everything was fine. So I just, you know, slept for a while. They turned the Jesus Christ. lights off. <laughs> And uh, they... They brought, it's like they brought in all my friends, you know, to make it look. Alter. Fine. So I just, you know, slept for a while. They turned the lights off. <laughs> And uh, they, they brought, it's like they brought in all my friends, you know, to make it look. They brought around people I liked and Jimmy. <laughs> Then everybody was around me making sure I was good, making sure I was okay. Damn. But Jimmy had his like, he was sitting in the chair turned around like an evil villain. Swear to God, everyone was looking at me and he was like Lex Luthor over there. And he turns around, he stands up. Ah, he, did the, he does the exact same thing when he's pretending to have a human connection. You know when you're watching a video and he's um he's like, oh stop, you're gonna make me cry. And he like touches his eye or whatever as if he's crying. He's not he's just I didn't have to pretend to do that shit. She says uh you know, as as if rehearsed by his lawyers. Uh yeah, you know, your mental health's the most important thing, you know, just want to make sure you're okay. And the last thing we want you to do is I can almost hear 
the words to come out of his mouth. The S, he just, he just stopped right before it got out. I, I did not get the 300K, but I got. Okay. Er hat weniger als versprochen bekommen. He goes, think of it this way. At least you get to keep what you earned. You know, you were in there for XYZ days. You did XYZ challenges, so you got, you know, 100,000, some change, you know, give or take. <laughs> you know how much money I spent in taxes? Ein Drittel davon, ja. Mit 300.000 geködert, ein Drittel, davon, ein Drittel davon ausgezahlt, weil das wurde ja nur geschafft und schwer traumatisiert, Alter. In, a, in, a, in 2021, I spent 44.000 Dollar in Taxes alone. Und jetzt habe ich all my family back home, I gave them a bunch of stuff that they needed. And uh, haven't been back uh, on a beast set in any official capacity or unofficial capacity uh, since then. And then uh, they did the video with somebody else and they worked out the kinks. And then uh, I'd still gotten some hot water and I knew it would. And I've wanted to say a lot of this for a long, long, long time. And I feel good though. I just had to get that out there. So I just want to hop in here and show some text that Jake sent me after this interview. This is July 29, 2021, a few days after he got out of- Oh, jetzt kommt die Proof dafür. Oh, sh let's go. Uh, solitary. How are you feeling after a few days? Better. I still couldn't sleep even a few days out, but I almost have my sleep cycle back on track. My legs and joints are good, but the blisters on my feet still hurt to walk on. Medical advice I got was not to lance them and just let them go away with time. I'm mentally still in an uneasy place, but I've gotten back on better help. My therapist is a little concerned, but we are working on things. Da hat jemand einfach, das ist, das ist wirklich, wir haben vorhin das Squid Game gesagt und ihr habt, wir wissen ja auch, dass äh, Mr. Beast irgendwie so ein Squid Game Fetisch hat, weil er irgendwie alles in so Challenges und so Longtime Videos packt. Da hat jemand einfach Squid Game geschaut die inszenierte TV-Show und hat gesagt, we need to do this in real life. I know this is not supposed to be a traumatic life event. This is supposed to be a uh, Mr. Beast video. Hey, Jake, hope you're doing okay. Meg and I just wanted to check in on you. Hey, I'm good and I appreciate that. I'm not exactly 100%. I feel like mentally I'm still recovering a bit, but back in therapy and my therapist is concerned. Haha, <laughs> but my legs and joints feel better. Like I can walk, but my feet are still covered on those blisters and those hurt to walk on. But I was told the best thing to do is stay off my feet and let them heal. I'm in rally with my family. Also, it'll be like a month before I get the money and they aren't giving me all the money. They're giving me what I want up to that point in the game, which was also a slap in the face. But hey, I'm out, I'm alive. But hey, I'm out, I'm alive. Therapist who knows and cares about you. The whole thing was so f***ed and honestly f*** them for not giving you the money. Meg and I are wishing you the best with your recovery and please feel free to reach out if you need anyone to talk to or need a place to crash in New York. Hope you do Alter, was gerade passiert ist die Realisation, dass das wirklich passiert ist, ne? Also, der, es, gab im, es gab einen winzigen Funken von Übertreibung im Zusammenhang mit der Story, weil Geschichten von Personen die Geschichte, Alter, jetzt ich schnauze voll von diesem Sonder, ich muss ihn jetzt rausmachen. Geschichten, well, von, man, Geschichten von Personen, also ich muss das jetzt tun, Chat. Geschichten von Personen, die traumatische Sachen erlebt haben, sind vielleicht nicht an dem Punkt, an dem alles zu 100% stimmt. Vielleicht wünscht man sich das auch einfach, weil es so krass, weil es so traumatisch ist. Aber das, was hier steht, belegt einfach nur, dass der mit einer Geld, also, der wurde mit einem Geldpreis angelockt in einen Käfig gesperrt, gefoltert, bis zur absoluten mentalen und körperlichen Erschöpfung. Dann wurde er da rausgeholt, schwer traumatisiert und ihm wurde ein Drittel vom versprochenen Preis gegeben. Video uploaded his money, so good. I appreciate. 
I'm doing better physically. Mentally, I'm still kind of in a place. I still can't sleep. I've slept five hours in the past three days, marathon included. I don't know what's wrong with me. Lots of thinking, too much, one might say. Hope they're taking care of you where they can. I mean, I was kind of shocked they didn't pay me for the full 25, 30 days. They paid me what I made up to that point. Like even when we have to pull the plug for my mental health, the mechanism of the game is still at play. I'm just happy to be out. I still can't walk well, but it hurts less. And like, I'm not famous enough to burn a bridge. So at the end of the day, I'm still Jimmy's bitch. Like if I was Carl and he did that to me, I'd ruin him. And they wanna do it again. That could be your leverage. If the guy breaks down also, two is better than one. Yeah, right. I told them everything they did to me that they can't do again in order to make sure the other person doesn't break down as fast. But like the way the video is meant to function is the problem. It's a bad idea, full stop. It sounds clickbaity, sounds right up Jimmy's alley, but it's morally unethical like on every level. Off camera breaks, lights off at night, visitation, take the marathon out. Marathon is a video in itself. You can't expect someone to exert themselves like that for 45 seconds of content. The challenges really made it feel dehumanizing, felt like a parody of Mr. Beast. I felt like the homeless guy they could exploit. It felt like of Jeff Bezos had a gimp. It felt like if Jeff Bezos had a gimp, part of me wants the footage burned and part of me thinks that there's a great horror cut in there. LMAO, he was so fake when he came in and said he cared about my mental health. They must have programmed the care about mental health updates. Uh, he said, we also don't want you to, s and I swear to our Lord and Savior, he stopped himself from saying sue. Also, as far as like, he could have said no, he could have left at any time. I want to show this segment from uh, an internal document at Mr. Beast called How to Succeed in Mr. Beast Production. Specifically on page 19, there's a paragraph called No does not mean no. Sega. Warum verklagt er nicht auf 100 Millionen Euro Schmerzen? 100 Millionen Schmerzengeld ist doch in den USA möglich. Was in den USA möglich ist, ist, dass der Typ, der am meisten Geld hat, den Prozess gewinnt. Das ist in den USA möglich. Nicht, dass du McDonalds verklagen kannst, weil dein Kaffee zu heiß ist. Wenn du keine Kohle hast, und das sind hier alle Leute, die keine Kohle haben, und in so eine Sache reinkommst, dann bist du wegen 40.000 Dollar, die er übrig, habe, übrig hatte, nicht in der Lage, jemanden, der Multimillionär, mehrfacher Multimillionär auf YouTube und in finanzieller Hinsicht ist, zu verklagen. Das funktioniert so nicht. Already insane, uh, because it's sort of, it seems to be co-opting the popular anti rape slogan, um, which is a terrible look given the allegations that are going to be coming out very soon. Uh, it reads, when dealing with people outside Mr. Beast Productions, never take no at face value. If we need a store to buy everything inside of, and you can call the local Dollar Tree, and the person that answers says no you can't film here that literally doesn't mean shit. talk to other employees and see if they are fans or if any have kids that are fans try talking to their boss their boss's boss have me dm them on twitter and try their social team if all avenues are exhausted and you are left with a no that doesn't mean don't try the other dollar trees because the manager of those could be huge fans and willing to bend the rules basically what i'm trying to convey is what we call pushing through no don't stop because one person told you no Stop when all conceivable options are exhausted. This is one of many tools that when combined dramatically improve your probability of success when producing here. So, so yeah, this idea of like pushing through no's is a big component to, to pushing through no's, Alter. Holy shit, bro. Alter, wenn dein Arbeitgeber ein Dokument hat, wo drin steht, lass dich von einem Nein nicht aufhalten, dann, also, also, puh working at Mr. Beast. Um, and, and, and the way that it manifests itself a lot of the time is like a director might tell a producer, hey, we need um, access to 30 acres of farmland by Tuesday or we lose half a million dollars. Now, if you're the producer, you obviously know that means get it done or you lose your job. So, so what can happen is like a producer's calling up farmers saying, hey, I need to use your land. And the farmer might be like, okay, but you know, I have animals. You can't be making really loud noises, no pyrotechnics, and you got to clean everything up. So the producer is sort of incentivized to lie and say, or maybe the producer doesn't even actually know the total contents of the video, right? Things change last second. So they're very like, they're financially incentivized to be manipulative and sort of, they're put in positions where it's like, 
oh, it's either the producer's job or a civilian's job, like where it talks about, hey, maybe the manager would be willing to bend the rules. Well, you shouldn't really be pressuring civilians to bend the rules that could get them fired, you know? I'll show you a real life example. This is unused evidence from um, part one. I had seen this Reddit post uh, titled, Mr. Beast leaving trash behind and debris at film site in Aden, North Carolina. Apparently he left a large boat in a pond as well as debris around the film site in the bottom of the pond weeks and weeks after the agreed time frame. This actually rendered it unsafe for campers and almost delayed the camp's opening date multiple times due to not being able to get in contact with Mr. Beast to get the stuff cleaned up out of the area. Uh, so I actually know that this is from a Mr. Beast video called Protect the Yacht, Keep It. Uh, where at the end of that video, he actually says, and If you're wondering, yes, we did ensure the lake was completely cleaned up after this video. For the love of God, subscribe so we can pass T-Series. Yes, yeah, so he says at the end of the video that they made sure it was cleaned up. I was actually on site um, for part of this production. I, I was at this camp. So I decided to send an email out to the camp, basically saying, hey, I heard these rumors. I'm, I'm investigating a similar incidents. Uh, and the camp responded, uh, actually not denying the claims, going on to say, I am sure that there are no perfect film productions just as there are no perfect people. I am grateful for the opportunity that we had to host the production crew and because grace or forgiveness has been offered to me so freely, I will choose to offer the same. So clearly alluding to the fact that there was a wrongdoing on, on, by Mr. Beast's production team. And that's like sort of the thing is, if you're around Greenville, you know these stories of people working with Mr. Beast and it being extremely unprofessional, them not doing what they say but they sort of get by a lot on their, their good public image. And, and like, I mean, this camp offered to, to host them completely for free. And I guarantee like if you went to the, the lake at the camp and you, and you went magnet fishing, like you, you'd find all sorts of debris that's still there to this day. Like they, they didn't clean it all up. So in the case of Jake Weddle, like I'm sure that there were producers who were in a position of, hey, if Jake gets out early, we don't have a video and your job is at risk. So there's a tremendous amount of pressure on top of like, him being delirious from not sleeping and, and everything to, mm. to just manipulate him to, into staying. Which, which, you know, I'm sure this isn't like technically against the Geneva Convention on torture because he wasn't technically a prisoner. Like he could have left at any time, but because of the extreme pressure to stay in, it's not really a reasonable expectation that he could have just, you know, walked out. Because of the implication. Ooh, sehr gut. I think Jimmy is a awkward kid who maybe yeah, had it a little rough growing up. I can't speak on that, but I do have empathy for it. Because uh, I you know, had it rough growing up. And I think when you're hyper fixated on something, like I, I love stand up, he loves YouTube, everyone, you know, fixates on a thing, you know. I think he just wanted to be the best YouTuber so bad. And because the industry's metrics, you know, rewarded some not great behavior. If you're just going on autopilot based on what the numbers say, you know, you, you can do some things that maybe aren't good, but reap reward. And I think Jimmy just did what the industry and maybe what the system that we have set up demanded. And he didn't care who got hurt. And I think Jimmy surrounded himself with really, really not so great people. And those people were the ones making the decisions. And I want to say really important. There are so many good people that work at Mr. Beast who are damn good at their jobs. Like when Jimmy comes in and asks for something impossible, it's these people's jobs to do it. And they, it sh they shouldn't be able to make it happen, and they do. And so, I don't think people wanted to talk about stuff because I didn't want my friends to lose their jobs. I don't care about my job. I'll buy a whole. I don't care. But I don't want my friends to lose their jobs. You know, I don't want anyone's reputation to be fucked. You know, but uh, just let's just go back to my dad for a second, if I may. My dad was uh, this, this was like a swim coach, uh, your neighborhood swim team. Everybody, everybody loved, him. everybody loved it. Behind closed doors, is a real piece of shit. And so, when stuff starts hitting the fan, what him? No, surely. And then you know everyone, you know, thought my mom was the bitch, you know, for not, you know. But then the news broke, 
you know, that he did what he did to one of the students of the team. And it's like when that comes out, you're not surprised, you know? You just go, well, when I saw my dad in the news, I said, oh, you idiots. Like, I was like, no, I was, oh, d- dumbass, God damn it. Uh, but I wasn't surprised. And it was just uh, consequences happening to somebody who was really good at avoiding them for a long time. And I don't know, everybody, everybody loves Jimmy. And behind closed doors, he is not super great. And that image is cultivated purposefully and intentionally. And it's branding, it's marketing. Es ist eine langsame, aber stetige Entwicklung von Game Shows, die sich immer extremer absetzen müssen. Und jetzt mittlerweile sind wir an dem Internetzeitpunkt und an dem Game Show Zeitpunkt angekommen, an dem Leute offen für Geld gequält werden und das Ganze Unterhaltung genannt wird. Und das Problem ist, dass wir in so einer paradoxen Situation sind, wo wir uns nicht einig darüber sind, dass das schlecht ist. Also wir sind uns unter Umständen einig, weil ich hier natürlich die Meinungsfreiheit einschränke. You know what I mean. Aber es gibt halt legit Leute, die sagen, naja, haben sie ja freiwillig gemacht, war. Die sind ja auch hier, hätten ja hier können, war. Und du denkst dir so, du verachtenswertes Stück Scheiße, ne? Du bist so ein verachtenswertes Stück Scheiße, ja? Vielleicht hast du nicht die mentalen Befähigungen, um zu, um zu verstehen, was das alles bedeutet, ja? Aber es ist schon, es zeigt schon wirklich eine besondere Prise Menschenfeindlichkeit, das so f- zu verargumentieren. Also wirklich zu sagen, naja, hätte er auch hin können, war, der hätte ja nicht dahin gehen müssen, der war ja, wollte ja die Kohle. Und du blendest alles andere aus und rechtfertigst das mit der Tatsache, naja, für Geld. Aber Geld. Eigenen Sch- Ich glaube, es gibt wenige Fälle, ich glaube, es gibt auch fast gar keine Fälle, die dieses Trauma erstmal in diesem Maße darstellen und vor allen Dingen auch so gut wiedergeben mit einem mit einer evidenzbasierten Grundlage, also dass niemand kommen kann und sagen, ja, hören sagen, das ist ja Aussagen, Aussagen. Gleich Idioten übrigens. Das hier ist halt einer der seltenen Fälle, wo das mal so dargestellt werden kann, dass, dass die Leute, die das so verargumentieren, wie ich es gerade gesagt habe, als die Weirdos herausgestellt werden, die sie sind. Du bist einfach weird. Du bist ein fucking Weirdo einfach. Du bist einfach, einfach ein komischer Mensch. Zu rechtfertigen, sich für Geld quälen zu lassen. Das ist einfach... Ne? No? Das ist einfach weird. It's... It's YouTube. Okay, so I guess, yeah, just one final question on sure. a serious note. Uh, obviously, the Ava Chris Tyson drama. And, um, you know, that's a known issue of traditional media. Uh, did you witness or hear about any uh, sexual misconduct at the company? It's crazy. I, I probably hung out with Ava the most out of the main cast uh, just because uh, I was on Beast Hacks. Uh, now Beast Reacts. I don't know if it's still out. Uh, that was a lot of fun because it was just you know being silly and goofy in front of the camera. And uh, Ava was the only person who was willing to film. Everybody else was too busy or didn't want to. And I was just trying to do my job. Sometimes there'd be like an offhanded joke. That's a little gross. I mean, I'm a stand-up, so I'm very desensitized to that. I didn't hear anything that was like, whoa, that's crazy. Like when I saw, the reason I messaged you instead of talking to reporters sweetly like I have been was when I saw the Discord stuff for the, I never, because when I, when I got there, it was like 2019. So I guess if the timelines add up, that would have been like handled for lack of a better term. And then they, and then they started bringing more people on, you know, maybe they thought they had that under the rug, you know? Uh, all right, we handled that. Now let's bring in some writers, you know? Um, and when I saw it, all that stuff started coming out. And the potentiality mm-hmm. as of this moment of recording, you know, I know this has been happening fast and stuff has been coming out so fast. Uh, just the potential that Jimmy could have been in those Discord chats or even the potential that he participated in those Discord chats. After the shit he did to me. And if shit made fun of my dad. I don't care what happens to me or my career or reputation after this. I had to I had to say some stuff. So whatever happens, happens at this point.
uh, outside of it, Chris Tyson, did you really send me or hear about any sexual misconduct at the company? I've heard rumors. I can't confirm or deny anything. I don't have any tangible evidence, but I've heard stuff that I, I, if it could be investigated, that'd be great. But it's like water cooler talk. But I've heard things, yes, of course. I heard, you know, people have been let go for sexually assaulting some very young people. The idea that Jimmy didn't know or that Jimmy was covering stuff up. He didn't want stuff to come out. You know, he's very careful about his image. You know, the tangible proof that he knew but covered it up. You know, how do you prove that, you know? Well, there was a known sex offender, registered sex offender, convicted sex offender on the registry and everything who worked there. And like, you can, you know, someone pees in public, you're on the registry, you know, you, you get it. You can still have a job after you're on the, you, that, that's not one, that's one thing. You know, you go to prison, you get rehabilitated, that's one thing. You know, like if you do your time, that's fine. I, I think there should be read the rehabilitation in this country. But that guy, from what I hear, I, I can't, can't confirm or deny, from what I hear, he's on the registry for doing some not great stuff to some underage people. Ein Mitarbeiter von Mr. Beast Crew war auf der, es gibt ja diese sex offender listen die geführt werden, wenn diese Straftaten begangen werden. Und er stand wohl auf dieser Liste. Oh Gott. And they knew that he's working at a channel that has underage people on and around and is targeted to underage people. And they covered up the fact that not only did he... 300 Millionen 300 Millionen Abonnenten. 300 Millionen Abonnenten, Digga. He worked there. But he was like the manager when it all started. And you know that he knew and because he'll be in videos. He'll be in thumbnails. He's, he'll be around. And whenever he, he, he is... He's wearing a mask. Why would you wear a mask? Why would you conceal your face? It's like, you, what, what are you concealing? That you are a registered sex offender? And that oh my God, Alter, what the f That your face could be looked up on a thing? How much more can you literally cover up a sex offender? With a physical mask? Like, do I have to, is, how, is it more on the nose? Or, <laughs> I, I don't know why they let him go because there's, there's rumors back and forth, you know, so I don't know why they let him go, but he didn't leave at one point. Okay, der ist dann irgendwann gegangen oder wurde gegangen. Even if that guy didn't do anything, they still knew about it and he was still around. And what if he's one of the people in the Discord servers? What if he's not? I don't know. But when I was there, they called him Delaware. Why, why, why do you call him Delaware? I didn't, I didn't know. Apparently they called him Delaware because he's not allowed to go back to Delaware. Ich kann auch nicht sagen, also ich kann es übersetzen für die Leute, die es nicht verstanden haben. Er glaubt, also der hatte einen Spitznamen, der Typ, also der dann gegangen wurde oder gegangen ist, der auf dieser sex offender -Liste angeblich stand, die ähm, jetzt geblurrt war. Ich kann sie halt nicht lesen, weil sie halt geblurrt war, aber man hat kurz das Alter des ähm, Opfers gesehen oder der Opfer, I don't know. Und der Spitzname der Person war Delaware und er hat sich die ganze Zeit gefragt, angeblich, also das ist jetzt halt wieder Rumors, angeblich, weil er trägt er den Spitznamen, weil er nicht in den Bundesstaat Delaware zurück kann. 
Und dann wäre es halt aus dann wird halt aus 1 und 1 2. That's his nickname? Colloquially? Like in a Yeah, it's Delaware. Don't ask me why. Yeah. The f And Jimmy knew about it? The likelihood that he didn't know is astronomically low. Oh my god, Alter. Alright, so finally I have a recorded phone conversation. The person on the other end of this line is a, a different former Mr. Beast employee uh, talking about Delaware. Um, also, apparently before this phone conversation got recorded, the person on the other end of the line said that the Mr. Beast team was actually trying to expunge Delaware's record uh, off the registry. And that's what actually like sparked this person to start recording. Okay, so Reed is Mr. Reed's former manager who was in the last video telling Jimmy, you know, hey, don't promote gambling to children. Uh, so, you know, I think I think Reed's taken uh, two W's this month, you know, uh, don't promote gambling to children and uh, don't have offenders on payroll. Also, yeah, just from where I'm sitting, it seems extremely unlikely that Jimmy wouldn't know, but you know, I know that that's, I'm sure that's the defense he'll go with. So I'll just say preemptively, like, you know, if somehow Jimmy didn't know about Delaware, I think it's still such an extreme level of negligence. Like what, you're not doing background checks. You're not, everyone at your company knows, but somehow you don't know. Um, I, I think that needs more of an explanation than just saying, I didn't know. Well, how didn't you know? How, how did this person get into the company and, and you know, a company that makes content for children and, and is around children? So yeah, Jimmy, I think we need an explanation from you or, or you know, your, your lawyers and, and PR people and representatives and spokespersons and um, on how you could have not known that there was an offender uh, at a high level in your company. And while you respond to that, why not just respond to the allegations of, of rigging contest videos and selling fake signatures, running illegal lotteries, um, you know, the, the dangerous conditions on the set of Beast Games, you should address those too. Uh, so yeah, just, uh, just let us know. Okay, that was my interview with former Mr. Beast employee Jake Weddle. Uh, I, I know he will be coming out with a uh, longer cut of this interview as well as other content. Um, so I just wanted to shout him out, Jake Weddle, top link in the description. I've waited a long time to talk about a lot of this publicly, so thank you for doing what you're doing. Oder das bricht einem das Herz. Holy shit, Alter. Ei, 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 Alter. Eine Befürchtung, die mir, also das hier ist für jeden, also das verändert für jeden, der äh, selbst nur weiß, was Mr. Beast ist, also was der für ein, was der für eine Internetpersonalie ist, ja, wie viel Reichweite der hat. Das zerstört natürlich alles bezüglich der Wahrnehmung. Die Befürchtung, die ich habe, dass mit der Größe des YouTube-Kanals von von Mr. Beast einfach nichts passiert. Das Problem ist natürlich, dass es jetzt sehr, sehr breit, ne? also es wird sehr, sehr 
heiß diskutiert gerade. Aber um das mal ins Verhältnis zu setzen. Das Video, was wir gerade gesehen haben, hat in der Hochzeit des Algorithmus, in dem es aufgefangen wurde, 5 Millionen Aufrufe gehabt. Mr. Beasts YouTube-Kanal allein hat 309 Millionen Abonnenten. 309. Mr. Beast befindet sich auf dem Weg, größer zu werden als die amerikanische Bevölkerung. Und das ist nur einer von seinen unzähligen Kanälen. Denn es gibt deutlich mehr als diesen einen Kanal. Ich habe also wirklich Bedenken dafür, dass das hier Auswirken, Auswirkungen hat. Denn erschreckenderweise haben die letzten großen Skandale der Internetgeschichte, und da nennt man jetzt einfach mal Dr. Disrespect, einfach nicht die Auswirkungen, von denen man glaubt, dass es bei normalen, normalsterblichen Menschen die Auswirkungen hat. Mr. Beast Zielgruppe ist vor, zu großen Teilen halt wirklich sehr, sehr, sehr jung. Sehr, sehr, sehr jung. Sehr jung. Was ich so ein bisschen hoffe, was hier auf Basis dieser Aufarbeitung, dieser wichtigen Aufarbeitung passiert, ist, dass Mainstream-Medien das aufgreifen. Also ich meine richtige Medien. Also so, dass das durch die New York Times geht, dass das Wall Street Journal da reingeht, BBC, CNN. Dass diese Medien müssen da rein, weil wenn diese Medien da drin sind, dann ist es eventuell nicht, dann geht es nicht um die Tatsache, was Mr. Beast tut, sondern dann geht es um die Tatsache, was YouTube tut. Denn unter Umständen ist medialer Druck auf YouTube eine Möglichkeit, gewisse Dinge zu machen. Jetzt könnte man über diese ganzen gesellschaftlichen Sachen reden und wir haben sie auch schon gemacht, so dieses Torture-Porn-Ding, so Game-Shows, die sich in eine Richtung entwickeln, das gibt es ja auch. Äh, tatsächlich auch in, deutschen, in, deutschen, in der deutschen Landschaft gab es eine Show, wo ähm, die bewusst darauf gesetzt hat, dass Kandidaten für Geld gequält werden und die, die das auch offen proklamiert haben. Wir haben jetzt hier natürlich perverse Auswuchs, so einen richtig perversen Auswuchs, wo jemand einfach gequält wird und gefoltert und das ist nicht okay. Es ist auch nicht, und ich habe das gerade gelesen schon wieder, weil man muss einfach mal bei, bei, bei klarem Verstand sein. Wenn deine Reaktion auf dieses Video ist, ich würde da trotzdem antreten, weil ich brauche das Geld, dann ist auch mit dir was nicht okay. Dann ist mit dir was fundamental nicht in Ordnung. Da ist einfach, da, da ist, bist, dann bist du nicht ganz dicht. Du bist nicht ganz dicht, Alter. Ironischerweise sitzen dann aber auch Leute, die denken, sie wären die harten Macker, um solche Sachen auszuhalten sind dann aber schon die verletztesten kleinen Snowflakes, wenn sie vom Chat, im Chat von irgendjemandem, den sie nicht kennen, dumm angemacht werden. Du wirst es sicher lange schaffen. Wow, das war ein sehr emotionales Video.